What's up everybody out there in television land and the internet? Michael Hurdle here from the Michael Hurdle Production Studio, helping you render your imagination when it comes to video production, 3D animation, and visual effects on a small or no budget at all. You would not believe how many times I recorded this video and how many days it took me. Every single time I recorded this video, something went wrong. Either, I did, I did 30 minutes the other day, and when I finally put it on my editing timeline, you know what I discovered? That the audio wasn't even connected. I was mad as hell. So, it's been a while, I've been gone. I've been hiding actually, I haven't been gone nowhere. I've been in the house like everybody else, under quarantine, waiting, waiting until the monster that's hiding outside disappears. Is it ever gonna leave? That's what I've been saying to myself. I was like, it's the end of the world, we're not gonna make it. That's what I was saying. I was scared. And over the time I realized, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at the news and I'm seeing people lose their job left and right. I'm seeing people who lose their job and will never get their job back again. Of course, in my industry, the 3D industry, the computer world, it's taking a hit. Movie theaters, you know what I mean? Like going out shooting films, actors meeting up, shooting your film. It's all plummeted. So I got scared. I was like, man, yo. I'm grateful that I still have my job because I'm a computer analyst. So basically, I, I'm an essential worker because I fix computers, I set networks up and all that kind of stuff. So they consider me essential. But I still was nervous in the background because I said to myself, I said, what if one day, because of all this pandemic, that I lose my job? How am I going to survive? That's what I was asking myself because I've seen a lot of people, they can't survive right now. They have no means of income. And like I said before, it is mad scary. And as I'm home, sitting down while I'm not working, and I was working on a couple of projects, it gave me some time to sit back and work on some new projects and just do a little catching up and doing some studying because I said to myself, it's time to change the game and up my skill level, um, upgrade a new computer. I will actually built a complete brand new computer uses some of the same old parts i got an i 9900 k uh, 64 gigs of D 64 gigs of ddr4 ram with uh, addressable rgb uh, this is my very first liquid cooler um and i'm excited because the world's changing and now you need a contingency plan more than anything else and plus i bought maya unbelievable right someone like me actually purchasing maya don't get too excited, it's called, it's called Maya Indie. And the reason why I upgraded to this brand new system is because my system, first of all, the current system I had was a Intel i7-5820K CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and a 500 gig SATA hard drive. So it was still okay, but it wasn't really kicking it the way I wanted it to. Now I've upgraded to an M.2 drive hard drive booting up, one, ter one terabyte M.2 drive. I think it's Samsung. Oh, God, I don't remember the name, so don't quote me. I'll show you a picture on the screen so you can know what it is. And what I like about that M.2 hard drive being the main operating system is that when I boot to Windows, I sit there and count it. It takes literally seven seconds for me to go to Windows from, a, from turning the computer on to being on the internet about eight seconds later. So that's a great thing. And just for the GPU, I got a 2080 Ti. And I gotta admit, coming from a Titan X 12 gig card, that was about six years ago. That's when I got it, it's the older version of the Titan X and it's DDR5. This new 2080 Ti is DDR6, GDDR6, and it only has 11 gigs. But I realized that as soon as I put that card in my machine, I went straight to Maya. I went straight to Photoshop. I went straight to Adobe Premiere. Because you see, when I was doing research on this card, the card was what mostly geared towards people who are gaming and i'm a gamer too and if you know me from a long time ago i'm one of those guys who i've, I've been gaming all my life i've had tournaments i've actually had a, a video game website at one point but now that i'm getting older and i've gotten older and i'm taking things a little bit more serious i said to myself i'll be gaming about 20 percent you know because sometimes you have animators block or editors block and you just need something to take your mind off of that for a little bit so I'm about 20-25% gaming and the other 80 or 75% strictly production. Coming out first, let's start from the top to the bottom. 
I went out and I got an Oris Wi-Fi Pro motherboard. I've been doing some research on that and I feel comfortable and I've always liked Gigabyte. I've never had any problems with them. My past motherboard was an X99 model and that thing has held me down for six years with very little maintenance and very little problem and it has not cut off on me yet. Then I went and got to, to sport that motherboard and to actually don't disrespect that motherboard, I went out and got a 9900K from Intel. Now the reason why I picked the 9900K uh, CPU is because everybody kept talking about the CPU power and you can push it to five gigs and, and you can overclock. Now I don't mind overclocking, but my rule is, is when I, over, um, when I first buy a system, I do not overclock for the first two weeks of me building this system just because I don't know what's going on I don't know I, I just want to see how it performs out the box and then once I get comfortable with those speeds and that type of performance then what I'll do is and then I'll venture into the bios and venture into these different apps to overclock because with overclocking comes great responsibility to tell you the truth because if you overclock wrong and you don't have the right cooling system and you don't have the right everything hooked up, you can really damage your hardware. So I've always been afraid of overclocking. I've also noticed a significant difference when it comes to editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. In my old system, I used to get a lot of bottlenecking. I used to get a lot of glitchiness because my CPU, funny enough, was not really compatible with all the new high resolution codecs. Um, like your HEVC, if I'm correct, the H.265, and all these and ProRes, and all these different codecs, and these different plugins, and different ways to make the video play. I was having tons of problems where I would see one of my friends who would go out and get a laptop, and he got, I think, a, a, the i7 8 series or 8700, and he was editing with no problem, and he has a laptop. And I was like, how are you editing with no glitchiness, no problem? You don't even have to make reference files to re-import back into Premiere. How are you doing this? And he said, it's your CPU. You got to have the right CPU. So let me tell you my adventures when it comes to dynamics, particle simulations, bullet effects, and all that kind of stuff in Maya. I've learned so much over the past few months of doing research on GPUs, CPUs, hard drives, boot up time, operating system, 64 gigs versus 32 gigs, all that stuff. And I've come to the conclusion that hardware or lack of hardware can limit you. So if you don't have enough money to buy a specific amount of hardware to run what you want to run, it's going to limit you. And, and we all know that because the budget that you have really makes a difference with the production and the, and the horsepower that you get out of your computer. The other day, I had my old system hooked up with the old Titan X video card that I had about for like six years ago. And I've noticed I've been getting tons and tons of bottlenecking. Whenever I render something, texture maps, or if I'm rendering something that's really high quality, one 4K still in Arnold with textures, background, and a sky dome with a HDRI image wrapped around it so it can give it that like real lighted look and it looks really good but I was realizing that on my old system as soon as I hit render everything will bottleneck I would go into my system monitor and I would notice that 100% of the CPU is being used when it's rendering that one frame and you can't damn near do anything else after that and the same thing with the GPU the GPU now you put it on the GPU to render in Arnold when I'm using Maya and it would render a lot more faster than CPU, but I realized you gotta do a little bit more tweaking when it comes to rendering on a CPU versus a GPU. Now yes, on a GPU, if you have the correct GPU, when you render something, it will take sometimes light years faster than the CPU. The i9900K versus the 2080 Ti video card, that has 11 gigs on it. In Maya, I can go into Maya and I can switch it between GPU or CPU. And when I put it to GPU, I render my work a lot more faster, but I realize the quality is a little low. Now, I don't mind that because I can always work and model and move around and pan and zoom and do what I need to do and add effects or whatever using the GPU. And then when I'm ready to fully render, I can go ahead and bust down the whole render during CPU. But anyway, my name is Michael Hurdle from the Michael Hurdle Production Studio, rendering your imagination. And thank you for watching this video and taking the time out of your busy day to hang out with me and check out my new build and my new computer. I'm styling now on the low. I'm kind of feeling myself. 
Um, and if you'd like to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram at Skate with Mike. That's the only thing I have. I don't have any other social media. It's just Instagram. And you can follow me at Skate with Mike or you can go to michaelhurdle.com and it will reroute you to the YouTube channel. Anyway, once again, my name is Michael Hurdle from the Michael Hurdle Production Studio, rendering your imagination. And I'll talk to you guys the next time I do a video. Later.